Hello and welcome. Again, this is part of a series on C programming uh, and we might be reviewing stuff, so I hope that you checked out the previous videos on uh, this series. What we're going to be looking at today is we've been looking at cross-compiling, compiling stuff for Windows on a Linux system. So far we looked at cross-compiling. We look at cross-compiling and hiding our shell windows. That way if you want to make a GUI application or just make a process that runs in the background, you can do that without the shell popping up. Uh, next thing we'll look at is on a Windows machine, you download a, uh, an executable file from the internet, which you should never do, and uh, <laughs> and um, it has a nice little icon. Because by default, it's going to have like a little you know application icon, but you want it to have a nice looking icon. And that's what we're going to look at doing today. The first thing we need is an icon. Um, so let me go ahead and bring over my file manager here. And I've added a resource folder here that has, you know, a nice little Punisher skull icon. It's a PNG, but we need an ICO file, an icon file. So first thing we need to do is convert that to an icon file. Then we're going to convert it to a C object, and then we're going to use our compiler to make that the icon. So first things first, I'm going to use image magic to create our icon. Uh, it should be in your repositories. Good chance it's probably installed on your system. Once it's once Image Magic is installed, and again you can use other icon applications if you want. Uh, I'm going to say convert our skull file. And I'm going to put our icon in our uh, resources folder as well. Resource it doesn't have to be in a resource folder. Res is just short for resources. That's where I'm keeping stuff. Uh, uh, dot ico, and you can uh, even do dash color uh, 256 if you want to make sure it's has the 256 color palette there. And I did something wrong. Thought it was color. You know what, let's just leave that out because I don't think it's really necessary. There we go. Now again, if I file out everything in our resources folder, you can see that we have our PNG here, but then we also have an icon file for a Windows icon resource. But it's not a C resource file, so it's not a C object yet. So we need to convert that to be a C object. So I'm going to, since we installed in the previous videos, our Ming W32, and again, or 64, if you uh, missed that, just um, aptitude or whatever package manager you're using, search for Ming W, and sorry, search for Ming W. And on a Debian-based system, it's going to be Ming W-W64 as of right now. The name might change in the future. But look for something named something like that. Go ahead and install that. Once that is installed, I can say I6 and hit tab to autocomplete. If I tab a few more times, I can see all these. What we want is this very last one here, I686-W64-Ming W32. And it's the WindRest, so the Wind resource, the Windows resource uh, application. It's going to take uh, our input file. And it's going to uh, create an object out of it, actually. But before we do that, I have a file in here. Again, all these files are up on my GitLab page. There's a link in the description of this video to that. Um, but we are going to list out our files here. You can see I have a file called main.rc. And if I cat that out so we can see what's in it, you can see that there's just one line in there, ID, icon, all capital, space, and then the name of our file. So it's in the resource folders slash icon.ico. So we need that. It's just a plain text file. And once we do that, then we can do our i686w64, uh, the WindRest one. So we're creating a Windows resource here. Uh, dash O. And we are going to say resource folder. And I'm going to call it icon.o. So, and then we're going to say main.rc. So what this is saying is use this application, look at this file for what you need to do. We're going to be looking at, and that file says, look at this icon file. And we're saying, we're going to create an object and we're going to output it to this file. And we did that. No errors. That's good to go. Again, if I file my resources, file will just tell us what type of each file is by looking at the header of it. And you can see again, we have our icon file here, this Windows icon. We have our PNG, which is a PNG file. And uh, then we also have this right here. It's an icon.io, uh, it's an object file. Uh, and it is stripped, blah, blah, blah. Everything seems good. So at this point, you can delete your icon file and delete your PNG. All we need is this icon.o file, this object file. And we're going to do I686 Ming uh, GCC, just like we did before. Everything we're going to do just like we did before. I'm going to give it our 
um, Windows start URL so that it will start a URL for us. I'm going to say resources um, our icon file dot O. So it's saying this is an object file. Include this in the compilation. We're going to say dash O for our output. I'll put it in our bin folder and I'll just call it. Um, uh, I actually already compiled this, but uh, icon underscore win hello dot exe. And this would compile it and a shell would pop open. If we want to hide that shell, we can say dash M windows, no errors. And now I can file bin icon win hello. And you can see that it compiled it a Windows MS Windows application. It thinks it's a GUI application, even though it's not to show in the window is going to be hide, hidden when it starts off. And when we look at that on a Windows machine, the icon for that exe should look like our PNG icon. Now, uh, before we look at that on a Windows hardware, actual Windows machine, I want to mention someone's going to ask, well, how do you do this for Linux? How do you embed an icon uh, so that in uh, your Windows uh, file manager, which by the way, if I do go into my file manager here and look at our files, you can see that it doesn't show up as that. And if I go to uh, our compiled application, you can see that my particular file browser is showing uh, that these icons for the Windows executable and then these other executables are just showing as files. Um, and the thing is, and I'm not saying there's never a case, there's there might be file browsers out there that uh, will show the Windows icons. But for, as far as Linux applications, compiling an application for Linux and embedding an icon, not aware of a way to do that. That's because there's really no reason to do this. Linux does it a different way, in my opinion, a better way, um, which I can get more into in a future video if people request. But basically, you should never just download an executable and run it. So you should never be looking directly at the executable like this. So you shouldn't be looking at the icon for this. Usually, if you're going to install an application, you should be installing it, for, installing it from a trusted resource, a tr trusted server somewhere, and it should unload the package and all the necessary files to your system. And then when you go to your desktop or file browser, there is going to be an icon there, but that's an, a link file, which is uh, just a plain text file telling it where the icons are, what applications run, and it even gives you more options for language and stuff like that. Uh, and it's a much more efficient way of doing things. Uh, and also, if you can also link stuff on a window. So when I embed an icon like this into the executable, it's always going to show that icon. Um, and by the way, you can make icons of multiple sizes in one file. We didn't do that. It may be something you want to look into. Um, but uh, on a Linux thing, you can make the icon look at wherever you want to on a link. On a Windows machine, you can create a link on your desktop, the links to it, but it's a ugly binary file that you need special libraries to create instead of just creating a text file. So that's just a quick little rant on that because someone is going to ask how you do this on a Linux machine for a Linux executable. And the thing is, you don't because it's, it's, it's just a horrible way of running applications in general. In my personal opinion, you can disagree. Anyway, let's look at this on actual Windows hardware. Okay, stop and rewind for a second. Uh, you have to forgive me because I do not have a Windows machine readily available in my house. Sometimes I'll get a virtual machine going for testing stuff, but I want to test this on real hardware. And I recorded a couple of videos where I compiled for Windows, and then I, a couple days later, went to some place where there was a Windows machine to test them out and record them for you. And if you watched the previous video about hiding Windows when they run, I made a mistake in that if you compile, even if you hide the window using the dash uh, M Windows option, uh, if you use a system call, it's still going to show a shell or a console for a moment there. And, the, and in this video, I was using code I wrote that was supposed to open up the web browser using a system call command. So there was a shell popping up. And not that that's the main focus of this video, I wanted to go back and do this uh, properly. So uh, instead of compiling that code, I'm just going to pile our write file code. So again, it's from two tutorials ago, or three tutorials ago, where we just open up a text file and append hello to it and then close that file and exit out of the application. Um, so again, we're just going to run the same command as before. I'm just giving it a different C file. I'm going to give it the same uh, icon object that we created before and I'm going to create an executable called uh, icon win hello.exe. We will compile that and I can uh, run the file command here on Linux to look at that. And it does say that it's a GUI. Um, so a, a graphic user interface, uh, MS Windows application, it's an executable. Now let's go ahead and run that on actual Windows hardware now. Okay, so I'm at a Windows machine here, 
and um, I'm going to go to my GitLab page, download that executable which is compiled on Linux for Windows. There it is. You can see the icon when it downloads. We're going to show it in a folder. You can see the icon there. You can see the, the last file we downloaded without the icon, giving the default icon. I deleted the text file that we generated before. Again, I'm going to tell it, yes, yes, I want to open this. That's why I clicked on it. Uh, and you can see it created a text file. If I open that up, it says hello inside. I can click on it a couple of times and you can see no window pops up and it says hello a number of times every time I click on it, it appends to that file. And if I go over here and I try to uh, make the icons larger, oh, I missed, set to extra large icons, you can see the default Windows executable icon if you don't give it an icon and then our executable which does have an icon. And uh, that is pretty much it. So again, uh, you can go to my website filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. You can search through my videos and my programs and notes, and you can also support me uh, with uh, PayPal and Patreon. All these links are also in the description of the video. And also for the code that was in used this, in this tutorial and basically this whole series, if you go to gitlab.com forward slash metalx1000, you can get there by clicking on this link right here. Then look for my project called My Bin, which is just a series of random scripts I've written over the years. There's a C folder and uh, tutorials and there's all that code and here's the one that we use today. Uh, so here's the one that I was originally trying to use in this series or in this particular video. I did a, uh, well, actually I changed it even when I was testing things out. Uh, originally this said start uh, and gave it a URL which would open up the default web browser in, uh, you know, for your system to that web page. Um, but I was doing a system call, even though I was calling a GUI application, which would cause a shell to pop up, at least momentarily. So that's why we went back, and I should actually change this code back to what it was, since it's labeled uh, start URL. Um, but we used the right command, just because there's no system calls in here. And that's pretty much it. I do thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.